Eric Whitaker's Lux Arumque is a work of great delicacy and unearthly beauty. Since its composition in the year 2000, this piece has earned both popular adoration and critical acclaim. But how did Whitaker compose such a distinctive and ethereal sonic landscape? Let's find out by the numbers. To understand the workings of Lux Arumque, it is first necessary to re-examine some of the pre-existing assumptions listeners bring to Western choral music. In very general terms, music that follows the rules of tonal harmony can be understood as a linear progression of related chords. Traditionally, ignoring displacements and inversions, these chords are composed of stacked thirds and come in three main varieties, the major and minor triads and the dominant seventh chord. Thus, excluding embellishments, this system allows for three unique pitch classes to sound simultaneously, with four as a possible outlier. However, from its onset, Luxa Rumque defies traditional harmonic expectations. Although the opening minor third hints at a tonic C-sharp minor triad, only two distinct pitch classes sound throughout the entire first measure. The harmonic shift in the second measure further defies expectations, skipping over triads and seventh chords in favor of a five-note cluster. This two-bar progression is repeated three additional times. Although in the fourth iteration, a descant G-sharp completes the tonic triad, this anomaly should be interpreted as contrapuntal rather than harmonic. In addition to unique pitch classes, it is also informative to consider the number of absolute distinct pitches sounding simultaneously. In this diagram, the bold line maps the geometric average of these two measurements, a relationship that contributes to the listener's perceptions of sonic depth and complexity. This reveals a pattern of expansion, rest, and repetition, which becomes a structural cornerstone of the piece overall. Whitaker uses this device to further circumvent traditional expectations, employing movements towards increased complexity in place of a conventional progression from harmonic tension to stability. The second phrase features the same pattern of tapered expansion as the opening, although this time with only two iterations. Again, the final chord is a five-note cluster. However, the initial chord is an A major triad. This use of the submediant chord, an important component of a common progression in jazz and popular music, reveals that, despite efforts to obscure and undermine listener expectations, the harmonic organization of Luxa Rumque is not entirely divorced from traditional tonal practices. The next section features an extended series of three pitch class sets. Although this section is composed largely of triads, these triads are arranged according to contrapuntal sequencing rather than harmonic progression. This section is particularly interesting in that it features the first cadence that resolves rather than expands. However, the final pitch set is a perfect fifth, doubled in octaves. While this is a harmonically stable arrangement, it is not technically a chord by traditional tonal definitions. The next section returns to the characteristic pattern, again with two iterations. In this instance, an additional layer of complexity is added through the introduction of an anticipatory embellishment, which overlaps the end of the previous phrase and bridges the resting space between the two instances of the pattern. This leads into a second, more complex transitional section. Building on the melodic foundations of the previous transitional phrase, this section features larger clusters in addition to triads, greater variation in the complexity of pitch and pitch class sets, and structural variation through the introduction of staggered entrances leading into the cadence. The penultimate phrase closely mirrors the opening phrase, albeit an octave lower. Three iterations of the characteristic pattern are followed by a pulsation of the five-note cluster, recalling the alteration between expansion and rest in the pattern. This sets up a modulation to the parallel major for the final phrase. The final phrase acts as an extended cadence, featuring three repetitions of the characteristic pattern and two pulsations of the cluster. 
The use of a major tonality is reminiscent of the raised leading tone and Picardy third commonly found in final cadences of minor key tonal music. A sustained descant G-sharp in the first sopranos sonically reinforces the dominant tone. Finally, Whitaker allows for the long-avoided true cadence, resolving from the tension of the five-note cluster and a dominant reinforcement to a stable root position C-sharp major triad. <laughs> 